I will reiterate the one thing that was kind of very what the fuck. It was Saturday morning. It was 6 a.m., which, like, any Saturday morning at 6 a.m., you should be fucking asleep. If you're not asleep at Saturday at 6 a.m., there's something wrong with you. Agreed. Or you work on a farm, which, thank you for doing that. And it was dark, and it was cold, and even the sun had Nine. the snooze button. It wasn't out yet. And I am awakened to... <laughs> on the roof. And I sat to myself, and I'm like, you know, if I didn't know better. That sounded like zoomies. On the roof? And it came back the other way. And we have our little kitten in the, inside, Lumi, little calico. And she's like, locked on the fucking <laughs> ceiling. And they start running that way. So she's running that way too, looking at the ceiling the whole time. And I'm like, they, they can't. They literally, so here it is. It's cold. I get my clothes do on. A, do you have a slanted roof? No. Well, well, in one part, but yeah. We're first, we have one, one story, pretty much a sort of like this. You know, not okay. like ranch style kind of thing. So like how? I I got on my jacket and my pajamas and slippers and I go out and it's cold. There's no sun. And I have to find a ladder and climb up on the roof. And what do I behold but two of the cats running back and forth on the and roof. So how did they get up there? We have a tree that ha uh, that has a limb that overhangs the roof, and it's like a five foot drop. Oh. Nine. There's me smacking the mic. It's like a five foot drop from that branch down to the roof. So what had happened? I think they climbed that tree. They went over the branch. They fell on the red. They couldn't get off the roof because it's five feet up. Okay. And they're running around playing on the roof. So here I am. I have to carry down the brown one. Then I have to carry down the... I'm up and down the... Nine. I'm like, I'm glad my, my, my neighbors cannot see me. See, and it's a good thing your, your yard cats are friendly. Because if that happened with my... Like, I could not grab them. They would just like, live there now. There's, yeah. Like, there's two of them that'll get within, like, five feet of me. But that's it. Incidentally, Grady is being extremely cute in the background. Hi, buddy. He's like, don't forget about me. I'll hear first. He's like, he's like, I know. I was the first cat, and I'm the floofiest cat. Nice. Those other cats. He's the OG. That's right. I got a new feral that's been coming around. I got, I got a big orange boy, and he really wants to be friends with my other ferals, but they're all like, you can't sit with us because we have we are most exactly are, like that. That my ferals. The, the two males are bla all black, and the female is a tuxedo. So I think it's like, whoa, you don't match. There's a color scheme. He can't sit the goth just, tape. He's trying to like, yeah, he just kind of like wants to make friends, and they're like, no, go find himself. But he does like this, the second level of the luxury tower I got. He likes the little hidey hole in there. So he's, he's like the trying to get him trapped. He's like the Trekkie trying to sit with the Cure kids. Yeah. Yeah. How are you doing back there, Grady? But he stretch. Okay. All right. Oh, bitch. So this week, we should probably just get to it because I I can't I can't eat this. Yeah, I think I think the good the the I can't even. Let's go. Okay. Each week, Catherine. Radio Dead Air audience, go out the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, and bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong With Me? Now, I don't know how much you know about the Cold War. I know you were around for part of it like I was. Um, how much? Do, yeah, I know what they taught us in school. You, you, you know about Cold War Berlin, right? Yeah, like it was. I like, know the ending. It is like literally the only good thing Ronald Reagan did. Yeah, it's it's like a, it's like a it's, it was like a spy haven. There was all sorts of cloak and dagger and stuff. It was like the central hub for for intrigue. It was all the East Berlin, West Berlin kind of because it was like everybody was right on the edge of the shit. 
I just realized that like a good portion of our audience has never known a divided Berlin. They have not. But you know what they have known? Internet game forums. Oh boy. Again? I know. As soon as I said it, you knew. You fucking knew. Again. It's the same game. It's the same goddamn game, Tara. Why is this game still allowed to exist? <laughs> what the hell? Fucking again. Fucking again with the War Thunder. How has this game not been pulled? Because this is like the third time that we've noticed it. But it happened. No, no, no. This is technically the third and fourth time. Twice in a week. The latest case involves a user uploading information on the F-16A Fighting Falcon. Information that, although dated, was not meant, to for, was not meant for export abroad let alone uploading to a worldwide messaging forum. Uh, War Thunder is one of the largest MMOs currently in operation, the free game, which allows players to battle each other on land, sea, and in the air. Makes you don't stuff. even have to pay for this game? That, yeah, it's free to play. Yeah. Um, and we're just trading fucking international secrets on a free game. There's one That's problem. amazing. There's one problem with War Thunder's success. Fans don't want to just stop at the game's level of realism, they want to take it even further by doing their own research and uncovering information they think will help the game. They then upload the data to online forums run by Gaijin Entertainment. The catch? Sometimes the information is restricted and should never be shared outside governments. Latest leak involves the F-16A fighter jet and the AIM-120 medium-range air-to-air missile. The F-16A was just introduced to the game. Um, entrance... So the F-16 was the earliest F-16 production, blah, 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 padding out the, the, the story. Forum moderators immediately hid the contents of the post. Space Navy 90 argued the information was so old it didn't violate sharing rules. The mods, however, said that the sharing, the info violated U.S. regulations. International traffics and arm regulations regime controls the flow of both military hardware and information outside the U.S. So... <sighs> what are the odds... That at least one of these cases is Baron Trump. Because <laughs> they're just like, they were just like papers all the fuck over Mar a Lago. So, like, right? what are the odds that Baron Trump is like, no, I know how that plane works. Here you go. Fuck you. I'm starting to think, number one, that this is not quite so act. I think they're trying to do this as a cover for leaking sensitive information to certain assets who are watching. They're like, what? I was just doing it for a video game, man. It's, it's no big deal. And then there's, yeah. they're like, I also think like- I mean, this game has to be full of like deep cover operatives, right? Like this game has to be like 30% CIA. That's what I'm saying. This is like become Cold War Berlin. It's like they're, they're yeah. all, all the spies are hanging out on the forum. Like, it's not dudes feeding the ducks at a lake anymore. Right. It's people hanging out on War Thunder. Like, is it even really a game? <laughs> this is a deep op. It's just it's a like... giant sky op. Yeah. Right, yeah. Because <laughs> I feel like if it wasn't, if the CIA and MI6... And I forget what the letters in Russia are, whatever. I feel like if they were not all using this as an asset, it definitely would have been pulled by now. I I just... If it is just what you think... It, and you know what? It's plausible that it is just what it appears to be because you know motherfuckers insist, number one, on winning internet arguments, and number two... That when the moderators speak up, they say, I wouldn't do anything wrong. Yeah. That, that is, that is. FSB in Russia. Yes, that's what it is these days. Yeah, I mean, never underestimate how pedantic the internet can be. Oh. And the lengths people will go to be pedantic. <clears throat> but I feel like some government somewhere would have pegged this as a security risk by now if it wasn't an asset. 
So if you're playing this game, just be aware that you are probably surrounded by spies. You're on a watch list. You're on like seven watch lists. They know you. Yeah. yeah. Cover your webcam. Because they're watching. Ooh, Orby. So, uh, this next two, these are kind of the same, but I, God damn. I, 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 that's all I could say. I'm, I'm, I'm at, I'm at that point this week. I'm already at God damn it. Um. Your audio, your audio just went insane for a minute. I have no idea what you just said. I said, uh, we, is it okay now? Yes. Okay, that was weird. Yeah. Why? Wow. Okay, anyway. Um. Oh, wow, we, we just blipped. Bl yeah, glitched on and offline real quick. That's gonna be fun to edit. Oh, maybe that's what happened. Yeah, this probably had a hiccup on my internet. All right. Anyway, so uh, yeah, these next two are kind of entangled, and we're kind of covering them as one because I don't. I just, I'm already at goddamn it this week. Florida man defecates on floor of Joe's Crab Shack during break-in. Fort Myers police are searching for a per pooping perpetrator caught on camera breaking into Joe's Crab Shack on Saturday. According to a Fort Myers Police Department uh, Facebook post, a uh, surveillance video shows the man squeezing through a small broken window to get into the restaurant. They said the alleged suspect stole several items, including alcohol, defecated on the floor before he left, he also snatched a Joe's Crab Shack hat off a shelf and wore it as he walked around the restaurant. Fort Myers police are asking anyone who recognizes the man to contact them or submit an anonymous tip to Southwest Florida Crime Stoppers. There he is. In the restaurant have bathrooms. They're actually required by law to have bathrooms. But and those bathrooms even work after hours. But Tara, I, it, I, I, I don't know how this could be the same person, because it happened very far away. But goddamn, but Tara, also this week in Tequila, Monday night, a thief broke into the administrator office at the Tequila Community Center, stole an iPad, laptop, and charging cable. Police nicknamed the suspect the Phantom Pooper after they left behind some DNA evidence in the sink. The suspect also left How very delicately worded. <laughs> he took a crap. Some DNA evidence. Left a big old one in the sink. The suspect also left behind digital evidence when they merged the stolen laptop's Apple account to their personal account. Stop. Needless to say, we do not see a lengthy or prosperous criminal career in the field of hacking for the suspect, <laughs> the police said. Said suspect is encouraged to wash his hands with soap, then come down to our station to return the stolen items and discuss his options to save everyone some time. You really, you really stole the laptop and then just logged in here. Yep. At Black E. Yep. Just. And then say you pooped in the sink. Just shat in the sink. Oh, what is happening? Why? This is quite literally like the worst evidence you could think. They, they will definitely be able to go. That's him. Like, it's. Can trace your poop. I, how do you not know this? I mean, I feel bad for the person that has to. Hopefully they can just run the computer. Is this crime now? <laughs> Tara, is this what crime is now? Like, I mean, they were smearing their poop on the walls January 6th, so I guess so. This is what we're doing. We're just, we're just evolving in reverse we're just monkeys hurling our feces again i i i didn't i i i, I watch shit like heat and whatnot they were pooping on the floor of the bank is this crime now yeah is this what's happening? oceans 11 oceans 11 it is not right 
Can you imagine if in the middle of Ocean's Eleven, like, George Clooney just fucking <laughs> took a dump in the middle of the Bellagio? <laughs> Is that how crime works? I don't know. That version's probably, that version's probably on Pornhub. Uh, next one is from uh, Napa. Oh, no. <laughs> Ocean's number, Ocean's Ocean's number, number two. two. Yeah. <laughs> next up, this is from Napa Valley. And uh, I have no idea what the fuck happened here. And I don't think anybody else did. Did somebody poop in some wine? Oh, no. No, no. Just this is a mess, a different kind of mess. Wine train hits. Pickup parked on Napa rail trestle. No injuries reported. Napa police are investigating a crash Saturday night in the Napa Valley wine train. Struck a pickup truck that had been parked on a rail bridge. Officers called to the trestle. A truck. Yes, it is. That is not a truck that used to be a truck that is now recycling. Um. Police arrived to find that a southbound wine train traveling at 20 miles per hour Keep that in mind, 20 miles per hour is not relatively all that fast. Struck an unoccupied Dodge pickup, pushing it all the way to the rail crossing at California Boulevard just east. No injuries were reported in the wreck, but the collision heavily damaged the pickup, no shit, and damaged the control arms at the railroad crossing. Police later contacted the owner of the Dodge. It was not immediately known how the truck came to be on the rail bridge. Well, one possibility is someone doesn't like you. Yeah. They just, they left your truck there. The other... yeah, my assumption was going to be like the truck broke down and you weren't going to sit on the rail bridge, but. You know, if my truck broke down on a rail, I would get out and push the motherfucker. I would put it in neutral and get that shit off the fucking rails. I mean, I would probably get out. And call AAA from the other side. I'm not staying with it. Like, you, you leave by you, 20 miles an hour. If you leave your truck and go away when it's on a fucking railroad crossing, you're not intending to get that truck back. Someone's pulling shenanigans, is what I'm thinking here. Yeah. Look at the 20 miles an hour. That's relatively slow, and yet still, that's a lot of mass. That is just... It looks like one of the cars they used to put on the front lawn of your high school. <laughs> the, the Mothers those. Against Driving Drunk cars. I remember that, like, every spring, Mothers Against Driving Drunk would get a mangled-ass car and put it on the lawn of your high school to remind you not to drive drunk. That's what this looks like. Yeah, yeah. Except he wasn't driving. It was a wine train. It was a wine train, yes. I guess drinking was kind of involved. Jesus Christ. Like, tangentially involved, yeah. What's going to happen is someone is going to be arrested for this. And that someone thought they were a criminal fucking mastermind. Don't they always? They always, they think they have untapped the crime of the century. And really, it's just like, yeah, we're going to find him in like two, three days. This is not hard. This... Also, I don't think your insurance is going to cover that. No, this is not. If this was insurance fraud, you're bad at it. Like, I don't think Flo from Progressive is going to help you out. Man, I don't even have insurance that would possibly cover. I have, I have like the basic, if I hit somebody, they get money insurance to drive. It's a, it's a 2003 pickup truck. Come on. Yeah. I have pretty decent auto insurance. I don't think there's any auto insurance that would cover train. abandoned my truck on a rail bridge and got hit by a wine train. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't even think, I don't even think J. 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 Jonah Jameson could be like, yup, we've seen it. I don't think so. Yes. I know his name is not J. Jonah Jameson, but. That's what you think, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, next up. I, wow. Of all, I think this is kind of tops the list of shit people have tried to bring through airport security. We have seen all sorts of things. Knives, guns, 
frogs, all sorts of shit has attempted to get through the TSA over the years. Lizards, snakes, lots of lots of turtles, lots of reptiles in undergarments. Oddly yeah, enough, yeah, and they don't like that. Someone did this. Okay, so this is I would call this one the uh, the hold my beer. Um, TSA confiscates anti tank weapon from passengers' oh. luggage at Texas export airport. Now, obviously, oh, fucking course it was Texas. Texas. Yes, it's a whole other fucking planet down there. I know. <laughs> what are you doing in Texas? Ah, ah, you know, if you live in Texas and you're watching this, just tell me what the fuck is going on down there. Um, because as far as I can tell, you are all insane. I, I, it, every single man there is scared about the size of their dick. That's all I can think. That's all I can think. Like, the, the whole place needs, like, a, a, a self-esteem course. Like, Transportation Security Administration at the San Antonio International Airport confiscated a portable anti-tank rifle from a male passenger's checked luggage. Passenger was scheduled to fly from San Antonio to Las Vegas, where he planned to attend the shooting at the outdoor trade show. What are you shooting? With the anti-tank are... rifle. That's not a gun. What? What woodland creature are you hunting? That's a god. That's goddamn ordnance. Do you have bill snipe where you live? They got bill snipe in Texas. Cause I don't know of any a... wildlife in Texas. I I know I know. I don't know of any wildlife in Texas that requires a fucking anti-tank weapon. TSA said the passenger didn't declare the weapon, prompting its confiscation. Like, for fuck's sake, okay, how did you think this will be fun? I'm going to send an anti-tank rifle through security. They'll let that one go. Like, you know how when you check your bag, they ask you, like, look at the list. Do you have anything in your bag you're not supposed to? I legitimately fucking panic every time because I'm like... I have my little portable phone battery. The battery is I have my little portable phone battery. Does that count? I have like a can of hairspray. Does that count? Like, I don't, I don't know. And here's so. Here's so. This dude just confidently strode the fuck up. I was like, nope, we're good. TSA said the pastor didn't. Once the anti tank rifle was discovered, TSA officer identified the pastor and escorted him to their office. I would think so. Jesus Christ. Man, it's like, what do they think? They weren't going to check? I flew with a guitar and they checked that shit. Like, they're like maybe there's a gun in there. We'll find out. They're like, they're going to fucking find this. It probably weighs they about it. Inspected our luggage. They inspected our luggage on a trip once because I had a flat iron in there. It wasn't on. But I opened it and left us the little orange ticket and broke a bunch of my shit. Because I had a flat iron. This thing probably weighs about as much as a donkey. Yeah, also, like, there's a weight limit? Yeah. <laughs> the fucking guy. Well, another, the, 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 the audacious. Texas, man. We had some even more audacious shit from, from, uh, uh, Canada, of all places. Holy, the, the nerve of this woman is is the part that really gets to me. Let's get the story over to you. You know, you don't associate Canada with just, just lost the nerve. Woman convicted in Woodman Addison's new explosion sues food and beverage company. You're like, what? Woman convicted of impaired driving in a 2019 crash that led to a massive explosion in an East London neighborhood is suing the company that provides food and beverage service at Budweiser Gardens. The statement of claim... The sentence is a mess. Yeah. What? In a statement of, K of claim, uh, Daniela Lees, 26, alleges the Ovation's Ontario Food Service Company shares some of the liability for civil lawsuits filed by victims of the blast against Lays and her father, Sean Lays, 
over the explosion. The statement of claim says Lays and her father are facing six lawsuits. Lays, who is from Waterloo, pled guilty in October 2020 through four counts of driving impaired, causing bodily harm for the crash that set off at Woodman Explosion. Um, she was given a three-year prison sentence. Court heard that Lees has been driving home from a Marilyn Manson concert that night at Budweiser Gardens, drove the wrong way on Queens Avenue before slamming into a house, severing the brick house's gas line. First responders pulled Lees from the car and cleared the area after detecting the leak. Fifteen minutes after the crash, the house exploded, setting other house on fires. Uh, no one died. The blast destroyed four houses, left seven people injured. So what she's saying is, they're, they got me drunk, so this is partially their fault. She blew up a house by drunk driving, which is impressive in and of itself. This is like the myth of the person suing McDonald's because they got that. Right. Not the real one, but the myth. Yeah. Yeah. So she's like, you served me beer, so it's your fault. They served me too much. That's, that's absolutely not how that fucking works. That is not how that fucking works, no. The, the fucking audacity of this woman. And she's in her thousands. Yeah. And she's getting the hell suit out of her, which of course she is. Because if this was a regular drunk driving issue, you'd be sued by that one family. But you blew up half the neighborhood. Jesus. Now, I know people have assured me this is like a rare instance. Because I was like, we were talking about natural gas for some reason on Twitter last week. And I'm like, I don't trust that shit. They're like, oh, you yeah. trust electricity? Yeah, I okay, but I don't trust it. I know maybe it's irrational. I do not trust piping explosives into my house. I have a gas stove, and, like, Dan swore by it because it was more precise temperature and all that stuff. I don't cook that much. Yeah. I boil water and shit, so I'm not that concerned with if it's 96 or 97 degrees. I could give a fuck. But there's like open flame and a gas line, and I don't love it. But I didn't get to pick that oven. I didn't get to pick it. So that's, you know. And my oven takes like 20 minutes to preheat, and I smell gas by the time it's hot. And that makes me fucking nervous too. And it is entirely possible for some drunk Marilyn Manson fan to blow up your house accidentally. <laughs> Man, oh, you, oh, listen. That's not something I feel like I should have to worry about in my day to day. And yet, with all the things you have to worry about, Marilyn Manson fans doing, blowing up your fucking house seems like it should be pretty low on the list. Yeah. Yeah. We have one more this week, and it's. It, it feels very much like yeah. Yeah, uh, this feels right. This, this, yeah. You, you kind of, yeah. You, you were lucky. You, you got away lucky. You son of a bitch. Um, thief steals Saint Mike, you, Michael statue from the church, trips, and is injured by the angel's sword. A drunken thief Wait, was atheist. <laughs> <laughs> A drunken thief was injured after falling on the sword of a statue of St. Michael the Archangel that he was trying to steal from a church in Monterey, Mexico. Local media reported that during the early hours of January 14th, Carlos Alonso, 32, allegedly went to Christ the King Parish in downtown Monterey to rob the church. Now, let's just pause right there. You're already like, all of the things I can rip off... We're going to my local church. Now, I understand the church is a larger entity, has a ridiculous amount of money, and, you know, embezzle from the fucking Vatican all you like. I don't fucking care. This is local church yeah. probably doesn't. Yeah, they, they don't. Yeah. They're not really big on the trickle down. Yeah. In the darkness, Alonzo reportedly jumped over the fence in front of the church entrance, broke a glass door while trying to flee with a statue of St. Michael the Archangel. The alleged thief tripped and fell on the angel's sword, seriously injuring his neck. Another pause. 
of all the things in the church to steal, you went that. I'm pretty sure there's a cash box in there somewhere. Yeah. And your ass is trying to walk out with a statue of St. Michael. Or some shit made of gold. And some passerby saw the wounded man at the church doors, called for medical help. Monterey Civil Protection personnel arrived at the scene, cut the padlock on the main gate of the fence, and saved the would-be thief's life. After stabilizing him, uh, stabilizing him, uh, rescuers took him to the clinic to be treated, get more information about the damage that may have been caused. It's expected that once he recovered, the suspect will be turned over to the public prosecutor's office. This is how you get God pissed at you. And I have to say, that is very on brand for St. Michael the Archangel. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's... If you, if, you, if you know anything about Michael, that is remarkably on fucking brand. Yeah, that's... yeah. Because you... he is basically the angel of fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> so, him just stabbing a motherfucker in the neck? Michael, I shall set you up all... Lucifer, I shall set you above the morning sun. Michael, I shall set you above. Go fuck yourself. That is, that is what you do. Pretty much. Yeah. That's that's his gig. <laughs> oh well, just like I haven't been to church in a while, but now I'm kind of like. Now, when he gets out on the street, that's the thing I'm thinking. What was his plan to be just walking down the street in the middle of the night with the statue of Saint Fucking Michael? What I mean, the... was it for personal use? Was it re do, Did you really need something to tie the room together back home? <laughs> Maybe he has the other four and he's just trying to complete the set. You know? I don't often say you fucking deserve that, but you're lucky <sighs> and you fucking deserve that. You're damn lucky. Yeah. Because, Jesus. And I love how it's like, <laughs> what? For some reason I can't explain, I know St. Peter will call my name. <laughs> I also love that after he's like, he's robbing the local church and still the people are like, oh, we're going to help you. Like, you son of a bitch. I mean, that's good. That's good Catholic ink. It is, yeah. Him, not so much. That's with the good Catholic so ink, but everybody else, good Catholic ink. Good job. Like, how in the world in Mexico City did you think you would ever live down stealing the statue of Saint Michael? It's Mexico. Yeah. Like, there's Boston and there's Mexico. We're talking about Catholic havens, for fuck's sake. <laughs> is the first thing we learned. You know, you, you got off light, sir. <laughs> the first thing we learned this week is don't steal from God. He has an ironic sense of humor. He's been doing this a long time, and he's bored. I've mentioned it before that my mom fully believed God was a vindictive asshole. We've learned. And Michael is his chief vindictive asshole. We've learned if you've gotten in trouble for blowing up someone's house via drunk driving, um, it's not Budweiser's fault. You you you, you have a choice. You, you saw like I just want no. You you drove no, no. It's it's time to learn some humility. We've learned maybe don't bring anti tank weapons. In your in your fucking luggage. Who doesn't know that by now? It'll be fine. I mean, we know who. Now, we know who. What? How? It'll be fine. I'm I'm me. It'll be fine. Texas man. We have learned that the the cunning plan of planting your truck on the railroad tracks for whatever reason, um. I don't think it's going to go how you think it's going to go. We've also learned that there are quite a few thieves. It's probably just... from YouTube. Yeah. 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 I can see that. Yeah. You know, you could... That's sad, but I can see... Well, maybe TikTok. 
because they just get the impact. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We've we've learned that an inordinate amount of criminals have decided that they want to poop at the crime scene. It's, is it weird that I have to say back in my day, the criminals didn't poop on everything? Damn it. We didn't just poop on things. We stole things like Americans. And finally, we've learned that fucking War Thunder is the, going to be voted by IGN most likely to cause an international incident. All spies. It's like, that game is like 30% spies, 30% 14-year-old boys, and 30% like actual grown-ups who don't understand what the fuck they're in. <laughs> who don't understand that they're like playing with Putin's bestie. <laughs> Man, you fucking beat him in a, in a PvE match, he's gonna like show up at your fucking house and be like, I scored the points on that one. No, no. All of a sudden, you touch your doorknob and you fall over and you die. Yeah. He was Did cheating. You, Pokemon? you were stream sniping. <laughs>